when, we, when we're talking about value hypothesis, you mentioned like every level might have a different need. Uh, so as an SE who's coming in to talk to people, I don't want to tell them like, oh, this is how much ROI you'll get back because I might, I, it might be different for them. How does this conversation start about value hypothesis and when does it start? Oh, well, okay. So there's, uh, there's sometimes there's some obstacles to get around, right? And, and uh, some of these folks, I call them the data hoarders, right? They're like white knuckling on the data. They don't want to give you data because if they do, then you're going to get a great ROI and they'll be at a disadvantage. So you need a little bit of that ROI jujitsu, right? So I will take industry studies or I'll take our own models and I'll say, look, this is the, you know, I'll, I'll take the simplest possible data, the data they have to give me for me to even give them a prize. And I'll base it on that. And I'll say, look, here's iteration one. And it's not perfect, but every time they object, it's an entree that you can use to ask for better data, right? So it sort of gives them a dilemma. Either live with the model I'm showing you or tell me how it's wrong. And most of them will give you some leeway. And as soon as you get into that leeway, you can use your relationships higher up to push down that sort of conversation. Because, you know, C-level guys, they always know, or, or C-level uh, women as well, always know that there's some value to be had here. Otherwise, they wouldn't be having, you wouldn't be in the conversation, right? It's sort of like if you go to a car dealer, right? If you don't have any money, there's no conversation to be had. But <laughs> if you do, there's gonna, they're going to find a car for you, right? Uh, that's why, like, the first question I like to ask, whoever I talk to is, why did you agree to meet with us? Or why did you want to talk to us? Because sometimes it's being forced by their bosses and sometimes they want to talk to us. And Absolutely. It's, it's I agree. good to know early on. So there's, um, there's this other thing though, right? Which, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways that these things can get off the rails and get sabotaged. Oh, yeah. and, and especially with people that might not be fully you know, that might be giving you lip service or it might be a pocket veto or whatever. It's important for you to be that, have that self-awareness to know that you can really get off the rails fast. And there's something that I call the, the trap of perfection, right? So, you know, at the top level, I like to apply what's, uh, have you ever heard of this guy, uh, this person, Guy Kawasaki? Yeah. So I think his principles apply to ROI as well. That is, there's not very much you can put into the top level ROI that's going to make it all the way to the top level person who signs the check, right? right? So when you're building the ROI, you can't be too complex and you can't be too broad, right? Every time you open up a new avenue to discuss something, that's a new avenue for objection as well. So there's sort of that art and science of picking what's the substance of the value hypothesis. And, you know, you, could, you might have 10 categories where you make an impact, but the question is, what are the ones where you can, you know, be very clear that the impact is there, it's undeniable, and it's large? And, and try to sort of stave off or, or starve out any of those avenues of, you know, of objection before they even begin. And then, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, if, can you elaborate a little bit more about, like, how you starve off? Well, so, so let's say that uh, for my own product, right, there might be use cases around uh, masking or around, you know, moving really big data sets um, within someone's prem or helping them, you know, hyper accelerate testing. Um, but if, but if they don't want to, you know, if, if cloud migration is sort of a, a project three, three months out or six months out, and it's unclear who's supporting that, it's unclear what the budget is, you know, you might, instead of trying to go for the $700,000 deal, you might go for the $500,000 deal on the two use cases, you know, are going to sell. And you sort of don't worry about that one or set it up for later or push it down the road or whatever it is that you're going to do, right? But the art and science that you're, when you're working with your sales rep is figuring out where can we get the best win fastest, right? Because it, it, once I get into the, the, especially landing new logos, right? When I'm landing a new customer, the important thing is to land. It's not to try to get, you know, the whale account and, and get them to spend $3 million off the bat. That almost never happens, right? The important thing is to find something that they know they can get value on, get them started and start getting them, you know, getting that return on value to them, right? And then let, let your customer success people come in and sort of build the case. They'll, they'll go everywhere and figure it out for you, right? So, so I, like, I've talked to salespeople who think, who talk about like making the deal bigger. Like a customer comes in and says, I want this. And then you come in and start being consultative and then you add this, this, this and that. Right, right. And it gets big and maybe unwieldy. What yeah. you're saying is just take the win, 
initial win and then work your way up to that big solution. Is that what I understand? I think in general, that's better when it's a new logo you're landing in general. Okay. And, and the thing is, is that we've had several situations in my company where they were so happy in say with the deal that happened in February, March, and with the rollout they got by the summer, they bought again the same year. Right now that that's a double win for us, right? Not only are they happy with us, but they've expanded already. And, and that's what, what I'm saying, right? Is there's, there's an art and science to it. You, there's a lot of people that get sort of rose colored glasses and stars in their eyes about the great big deal. But having been in that conversation a lot, it very rarely happens. Right. Nobody's yeah. going to go make a $5 million bet on something they don't, they've never seen before. Right. It's not going to happen. 